Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor. I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Uh, today we will talk about the diet, about the nutrition of cancer patients. It's not a lecture about the cancer prevention for healthy people, uh, because uh, cancer prevention is um, a quite um, much better understand it topic, I would say, because we know a lot of foods that can help to prevent cancer. We know that those people, for example, who eat a lot of vegetables, fruits, uh, less uh, red meat, uh, who eat maybe Mediterranean diet, they have less risk of uh, uh, getting cancer. But when the patient already has cancer, the situation is totally different and much less understand it, uh, even by sciences, uh, science, because different recommendations from different countries may uh, have uh, quite um, different uh, opinions about it. And also what uh, can prevent cancer, uh, it cannot necessarily treat it. Uh, so the topic is very difficult, to be honest, and uh, I spent quite a lot of time preparing this lecture for you to gather all the information that you may need for better understanding the situation. I won't give you the exact recommendations that you need to do this, this, you need to eat this, you cannot eat this. Why? First of all, um, my channel is based on science and um, there are a lot of gaps in the science, uh, in the nutritional sciences. And uh, there are a lot of um, different researches that show totally opposite results. And uh, also all the patients are different. We are all different genetically. Uh, we have our own um, lifestyle. We have our own uh, habits. And um, all the tumors are different. Even the same diagnosis we take to patients one for example, both have lung cancer, but this, oh, these tumors will be totally different. Even the diagnosis is the same, the stage is the same, localization, everything is the same, but they will behave totally differently. And we uh, know some, only some markers of uh, the uh, cancer that can help us to uh, make the prognosis how it will behave, but most of uh, the tumor uh, characteristics uh, are still unknown and we don't know how to predict the tumors. Even one patient with the diagnosis of cancer has a totally different parts of the same tumor and they behave differently. And we find that this metastasis looks like this, the primary tumor looks different, this metastasis looks different again, so it's very difficult. That means that there is no uh, general recommendations that uh, can be applicable for everyone. But there are some principles. I will try to tell you a, a little bit about the principles. Please, look, uh, we will talk about why the nutrition is so important. I will give also you some information about the official recommendations that uh, doctors and oncologists usually give to the patients. And um, also we will talk about the uh, does really cancer love sugar? about the Warburg uh, phenomenon, about uh, the keto diet. Is it really a panacea? If, is it really the super treatment for any type of cancer? And um, we will talk about uh, whether the sugar can be uh, actually good for cancer patients or not. And uh, also a few words about the restriction of different amino acids uh, or vitamins in order to starve the tumor. And does really uh, fasting starve the cancer? Let's get started. Okay, why uh, diet is so important? The diet is the basis of everything. We know that uh, what we eat can really cause many problems because, uh, for example, uh, according to World Health Organization, uh, many um, of cancer cases are really preventable. And many of them are uh, associated with uh, the unhealthy food consumption. Um, we know that many diseases may be caused by food. And for example, some products may aggravate gout or uh, diabetes or uh, the kidney stones, for example. And we actually use diet for treatment of many conditions as a part of complex treatment. And uh, it is uh, really necessary 
to choose the correct uh, diet for every uh, individual patient. I want to emphasize that uh, the diet is not the replacement of treatment. It's the additional important component. Uh, we know that malnourished patients uh, who have low weight or who have low muscle mass, they are more prone to uh, adverse reactions during treatment. They don't survive so well the uh, treatment of tumors. They have more risks during surgeries. That's why it's very important to uh, assess the risk of every patient coming uh, and the oncologist will uh, see uh, his uh, status of the patient and if needed he will uh, even um, prescribe some additional um, remedies for this. For example, sipping. Uh, these are protein shakes. They, that's not only proteins. There are a lot of calories, a lot of vitamins, microelements there. But in small amount of uh, shake, there is a cocktail, there is a large amount of calories and uh, uh, nutrients. And this is usually given in addition to the normal uh, diet of the patient. So uh, whether you need it or not, it's uh, decided by your doctor. And uh, according to the recent meta-analysis, this is the uh, statistical analysis of many, many clinical trials on real cancer patients. These additional uh, nourishing mixtures, they really help to decrease the side effects of the treatment. And because uh, all the tumors are different, all the patients are different, uh, depending on the localization of the tumor, depending, uh, depending on the uh, nutritional status of the patient, uh, we need to um, choose the individual uh, regimen for every patient and choose what diet he should follow. We know that uh, every day, in every uh, person, thousands of cancer cells are formed, but normal immunity, uh, normal mechanisms of uh, anti-cancer mechanisms, they will stop the survival of these cells or just fix the mutations. But in addition to genetics, to environmental factors, to bad habits, immunity problem is present in almost every cancer patient. That's why it's very important to work with immunity too. I was talking before about the immunomodulators during uh, chemoth uh, in oncology patients. I was talking about medicinal mushrooms like reishi, like uh, um, chaga, that uh, can influence the immune system. Especially we know that during chemotherapy, it affects the most fast growing cells in the body. These are tumor cells and also immune cells are very fast uh, dividing cells. That's why immune, uh, chemotherapy will affect them very much. That's why we need to support our immunity. And also we need to take the um, products, the food that will uh, give all the necessary components for normal immunity work. I was talking about it in one of the videos before. And if we talk about the official recommendations, we know that the oncological process is uh, connected to catabolism. The proteins will break down. The tumor will release the cytokines that will increase inflammation in the body. That's why we can see, for example, fever or weight loss in such patients. And um, the body will break down its uh, components, its storages to fulfill the needs, nutritional needs of the tumor. And these patients lose muscle weight. And uh, the muscle mass, it's uh, needed for physical activity that is very important in struggle with cancer, in normal functioning of the body, of the immunity and also with um, increased risks of adverse reactions during the therapy and worse outcomes. That's why we always monitor the protein in these patients, the albumin in the blood. And uh, we, if necessary, we give the protein shakes. And we need to adjust the diet so it will be uh, rich in calories, so rich in nutrients. Uh, the need of, for protein in, in such patients is 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kilo per day. And the energy needs are 25 to 30 kilocalories per kilogram per day. We give a preference for um, the fractional nutrition, five to six times a day or even more, uh, with uh, inclusion of vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits has a, have a lot of good things like fiber, like lots of vitamins, and uh, they have a lot of uh, natural anti-cancer compounds in them. We need to include unrefined grains, 
and limit the intake of uh, refined carbohydrates. For example, uh, the white rice is not very good. It's better to take brown rice because all the vitamins are in the coverings of the grains and cereals. Then, it's necessary to limit the consumption of red meat as it's considered to be the um, oncogen. And the red meat consumption must be 350 grams per week uh, by the recommendations. Uh, but really, this is more for prophylaxis, but during the uh, cancer treatment, when the patient is malnourished, he needs uh, protein very much. I would say that uh, this recommendation can be reconsidered. In such situation, we have a different approach. And sometimes it may be necessary to give patient a lot of meat, because meat is also rich in vitamins and micronutrients and uh, in protein, also fat. That means in some situations meat is totally okay for oncologic patients. And we always look how the patient individually will tolerate these or that foods. And we always need to limit the consumption of different uh, processed meat like sausages, smoked, pickled foods, uh, fried foods, canned foods, very salty foods. This is not good even for a healthy person. It's okay if the person eats spicy, a little bit spicy, not very much, uh, because spices may have also anti-cancer action and it, they may increase, improve the digestion. But also we must see how the person tolerates it and what's the tumor localization. More vegetables, more fruits, more grains. We shouldn't forget about the interactions between food and drugs. The classical example is grapefruit. Better not to take grapefruit for these patients, especially if they are getting some treatment. It may increase toxicities or it may reduce the effectiveness of the drugs. And we should always fight with the loss of appetite. How do we do that? First of all, the uh, more often uh, small meals may help. Also, maybe add some lemon, something sour, maybe a little bit spicy. Try to cook tasty. It's totally okay for the patient because he's in such condition when we are not thinking about, oh, if we give him, for example, chocolate shake, oh, it's very bad for him. In 10 years, it can lead to some problem. No, we're talking about now. Now, if the patient can't eat anything and he wants chocolate shake, please give him chocolate shake so it will uh, improve his situation, improve his nutrition and increase his mood, of course. That is very important in the struggle with tumor. Next, doses of vitamins and minerals. They must not exceed their daily needs and uh, preferably they should be um, received from the normal food. Supplements are needed only if there is a real deficiency. If there is a deficiency of, for example, iron or B12 or folate, please give the patient, uh, don't, don't be afraid of taking these supplements. Otherwise, don't take any extra supplements that are not needed. About folate, I will tell you later, because in some situations it's better not to take folate. We'll talk about it later. Next, if the patient has, for example, diabetes, insulin resistance, it's better to maybe limit his carbs a little bit and uh, give him more fats, because fats are twice more effective energy uh, source than uh, proteins and than carbs. Even in some recommendations, they say, oh, don't give anything fat, no fats, no fatty meat. By the way, fatty fish, if the patient tolerates it well, it's a good source of uh, different uh, nutrients, of calories, and also of uh, iodine. That is very important. Seafood is good in general. Also, we can always choose uh, the meat, um, uh, like uh, poultry, for example. The meat uh, that is uh, more easily digested. Also, I forgot to tell you to fight the uh, bad appetite. Uh, doctors can prescribe prednisone. It's usually a short course of one to three weeks. But the problems are increased uh, loss of uh, muscles, uh, increased uh, fat. That means gaining weight, but not uh, because of gaining muscles and building protein. It may also aggravate the insulin resistance and it may increase the risk of infections. Also, the other uh, drug, for example, is Megastrol or uh, Progestins. Uh, these are female hormones uh, and uh, they can also increase the appetite by the problem. But the problem is risk of thrombosis. By the way, omega-3 and fish oil may also help these patients. 
If the person has aversion to meat, please, there are other sources of protein like eggs, like beans, uh, legumes, uh, like um, milk products, cottage cheese. Also, if there is the, for example, nausea vomiting or their food is stuck in the stomach, it's not moving, then their drugs like metoclopramide may help. Uh, their food must be cooked if the person is using chemotherapy, because if their uh, immunity uh, decreases, uh, there is increased risk of infection. Better to uh, use the temperature to kill the bacteria in the food. But if possible, if the patient tolerates well, it's better to use fresh fruits and vegetables rather than cooked ones. But it depends on the individual situation. Fruits, uh, melons, especially watermelons, they should be uh, taken at least 30 minutes before meal, not together with. Uh, also, uh, there are some fruits and vegetables that are rich in fiber, like, uh, for example, uh, dates, figs, most of uh, berries, oranges, lemons, beets, carrots, cabbage, eggplant, sweet peppers, and there are some others that contain not uh, a lot of fibers. Watermelons, melons, zucchini, uh, tomatoes, green onions, etc. Honey. It's a carb. Uh, we will talk later about keto diet. Of course, you can't use honey there and many vegetables there and many fruits there. Most of fruits there, but still. Uh, honey can help in uh, uh, fight with uh, different side effects of uh, radiation therapy and chemotherapy, especially when it's connected to mucositis, the ulcers in mouth and tongue and gums in the all the GI tract, it may help to protect the mucus and heal it a little bit. And also it's the source of uh, calories of carbs, but don't exceed 60 grams per day. And also honey is not very good for diabetics. As for fats, also you can use the vegetables fats like um, olive oil and uh, flaxseed oil. Also black cumin oil is quite interesting in cancer patients. I have some uh, videos about this. They may actually protect from um, drops in immunity in neutrophils during chemotherapy. All the other oils are better not to use because they are more inflammatory. They have more omega-6, but these oils have a good uh, omega-3 concentrations. Also, as a source of fats and proteins, you can use nuts. But be careful how you store them because they can easily uh, get the mold and mold uh, on the products is prohibited, for, especially for cancer patients. Cruciferous and uh, cabbage, a uh, very interesting family of uh, foods, of uh, vegetables. Uh, if you take the usual cabbage, you should better uh, make it as small as possible, so it will be easier, uh, digested more easily. Uh, if you have a problems with GI tract, it's better not to eat it raw or not to eat it at all. But it's rich in uh, fiber and it has a lot of sulforaphane that is anti-cancer and antioxidant um, component. Also broccoli is very good. And uh, by the way, three day sprouts of broccoli, they contain 30 to 50 times more sulforaphane than their mature broccoli plant. And if you cook broccoli, it's just a few minutes. Cauliflower, it has less fiber, but it's uh, much uh, better tolerated, especially for people with GI problems, with lots of gas bloating. It has a lot of uh, nice vitamins, vitamin A, C, uh, group B vitamins, and it's easily digested, much easier than usual cabbage. And that's it about the general recommendations and principles. Let's go to the next interesting topic about their 